Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to continue uh, talking about some of the basic CVs. I covered the basic eight in the first video in this series. And today I want to go ahead and cover a, a couple of more, actually three more, and um, including CV29, and, but also the, uh, the long address or four digit address um, uh, CVs. So hang around for a minute and we'll get started. Uh, before we do get started, though, I want to remind you again about subscribing to the website. Hit the little red button here on the lower right-hand side of the screen, or, and you can click on that and subscribe. We've already gone over 850 subscribers now, so we're closing in on 900, and hopefully by the end of the year, as I've said, we'll be up at 1,000. So let's go ahead and get started with programming long addresses in CV29. Okay, this is mainly going to be another one of those talking head type uh, presentations. But uh, I think it's important that we get some of these concepts across to you. And the first one that I want to talk about is not CB29, but it's the long or the four digit address. Now, I talked a lot about the two digit address in the previous video, and I didn't tell you how to use or how to, how to program a four digit address. And the reason for that is, as I said, anything above CV8 and you're getting into complications. And the problem with that is, like, you know, as I said, with, with uh, the short address, it takes up two digits and it all fits in one CV, okay, CV1. Now, a four digit address is twice as much, so it takes up two CVs, CV17 and 18, are required in order to program the four-digit address. Now that said, it's very com it gets complicated calculating the values that go into that. And if you're interested in it, if you go to the DCC Wiki site, that's W-I-K-I, they have a lot of information on there about DCC in general and about addresses and what the different addresses mean and how they are calculated and the CVs they go to, all of that kind of thing, it's on DCC Wiki. So I strongly recommend that you take a look at that sometime. The important thing about CV 17 and 18 is that you don't ever have to program it yourself. Why? Because every DCC system that I have ever used and I'm familiar with takes the four digit address that you enter into the throttle and converts it to the values that go into seven, CV 17 and 18. So it's one of those things that you never have to worry about. Okay, for this demonstration, I've switched to using a Digitrex throttle, and I've placed the same, uh, a different locomotive on the, uh, on the main line, and we'll be doing programming on the main with this. So with the, DC, with the uh, Digitrex throttle set up uh, for loco 6424, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the program button here, and that will take me into programming mode. But I want to advance through until it says Ops Mode 6424, which gets me uh, the Loco 6424, decoder address 6424, and all of the uh, programming changes will be sent just to that decoder on the main line. Okay, so there we have it, 6424, and it's asking me a value for address 2. Now, one thing I can do is just click here and you'll see that it's gonna to switch to address four. So it's asking me, what do I want to put into address four? So I'm gonna key in 6424, as you can see here, and then hit the enter button. And it went ahead and it sent the programming command to the decoder in that locomotive, and it will now respond to 6424 as the four digit address. So it's that simple and straightforward. And like I said, every DCC system that I've ever used, it's that simple and easy to do. So you really don't have to worry about 17 and 18. Okay, with that done, let's go ahead and move on to 
CV29 because it's going to be very important for some of the things that we've just done. Okay, CV29, and I've got this neat little table here, and uh, that's about the easiest way to show you what it is. I'm going to cover my face up for a minute. And CV29 covers four separate functions, okay? And I'm going to go through those, tell you what each one does, and we'll talk about programming, okay? And I'm going to put this, a link to this table in the description so that you can at least uh, copy the, uh, the URL, the web address, and go and download a copy of this for your own use. And I will tell you, this came out of a Digitrex manual, so it's, uh, it's from their uh, products, and I wanted to give them credit for it. It's a really nice, usable table. And basically, CV29 has been called the master variable, as I've said, because it covers these four different very important functions. And uh, it's all calculated together and built into um, a value, one value for CV29. So it, it gets complicated calculating it individually, but again, all you have to do is enter one value into CV29 and it will take care of all four functions. Okay, so what's the first thing? Well, CV29 first takes care of determining whether the decoder is going to respond to a two-digit address or a four-digit address. As a result, uh, as I've said before, if you key in a value of 05 or 10 or something else into CV3 as an alternate, then you can go ahead and use a two-digit address. But under most cases, I recommend going ahead use four-digit addresses. And one reason I do that is, is because consist addresses use the same values, two digits. And we'll get into that in a later time when we talk about consisting locomotives. So to avoid confusion and problems and conflicts, it's just easier to go ahead and use the four-digit address. Plus, most locomotives have a three or a four-digit address on their cab or on the sides of, of them somewhere. So it's just easier in the long run to know that, okay, 6424 is on the side of that locomotive. And that's what I key in to acquire uh, that locomotive when I'm going to run it. The second function uh, that I want to talk about in CV29 is the normal direction of travel, whether that locomotive is set up to go forward or reverse. Now, that seems quite uh, straightforward with a steam locomotive because, you know, the, the end with the smokestack is forward and the end with the tender is reverse. So basically, if the locomotive comes up going the wrong way, then obviously you just change this value. If you have, have wired in uh, your decoder backwards so that the wires going to the motor are reversed, okay, and instead of getting positive going to the positive terminal, you're getting negative, then the locomotive might go backwards when it should be going forward. And that has implications for the lights and sounds and everything. So instead of using this forward and reverse setting to determine the normal direction of travel in that kind of case, it's best to go back and sort out your wiring problem. Fix the wiring problem so that when you've got a positive feed going to the positive terminal on the motor, it's going forward. Now, with diesel locomotives on some railroads, the short hood end is forward. On other railroads, the long hood end might be forward on the same class of locomotive. So it gets a little confusing there, but you want the locomotive set up so that when it's designated to be going forward on the throttle, that the locomotive is actually moving in the forward direction. And that's a case when you can use this forward and reverse setting. Where does that become important? Well, uh, if you've got your headlights set up for rule 17 so that the headlight dims when the locomotive is going in reverse and is fully bright when it's going forward, you don't want the reverse of that to happen. And the only way the that the decoder knows which way to set that up is if forward and reverse is properly set up in the decoder itself. The next thing I want to talk about are the speed tables. Now, when DCC was first introduced, it was limited to 14 speed steps. Then in 1994, when it came out in the US, uh, the US manufacturers added um, 14 speed steps, so it became 28 speed steps. 
So that gives pretty good fine control. But then not long after that, they went ahead and added more and went to 128 speed steps. Okay, so you get very, very fine control over uh, your speed using uh, 128 speed steps. Now, another thing that's available with DCC decoders is loadable speed tables. You can go with the default speed table in the decoder of 14, 28, and 128 speed steps, or you can design your own. You can have a speed table that controls completely how that locomotive is responding as you increase the throttle setting. It is important though that when you set up the decoder that you set it up so that it knows whether it should respond to the 14 speed steps or to the 28 slash 128 speed steps or if it should respond to those loadable speed tables for those. So that sounds kind of complicated and but for the most part you're going to be using the 28 slash 128. And most decoders will do that with your loadable speed tables as well. The important thing is 99% of the time you're going to be using 28, 128. So it's a fairly straightforward selection to do. Okay, the final thing is analog mode conversion, whether that's on or off. Now analog mode is the ability for a decoder to operate on a DC powered track. But there are cases, though, where you don't want that uh, enabled. And the reason for that is, if a short occurs on your track for, due to somebody going through a closed turnout uh, set against them, that kind of things, or derailing at the points, anything like that that causes an intermittent short on the track, when that happens, because of physics and electronics, a pulse of DC power goes shooting out onto the rails. And your decoder sees that. And if it's set for analog conversion, it's going to think, oh, I'm on a DC power track, not DCC. And it's going to convert to analog mode, and it's going to take off like a bat out of hell. And in that case, it's not going to stop until it ends up on its side on a curve somewhere, or even worse, on the floor. So I recommend that in all cases, turn analog conversion off. And when you need it, you can reactivate it by simply changing the CV value for CV29. Okay, so those are the big four functions then for CV29. So let me just show you one thing here on this table. You can see that for each one of these sets of conditions for CVs uh, or for CV values that would give you two or four digits or would uh, give you uh, the forward or reverse direction of travel, or the proper number of speed steps, or whether or not analog conversion is on or off, there is a unique CV value here in the first column of this table. And all you have to do is go across, find the set of conditions that you want to use, look up the CV value, and enter that into CV29. In this case, I've outlined the one I use most often, and that is a CV value of 34. And that gives me four digit addresses. Uh, it gives me a uh, forward direction as normal. It gives me 28, 128 speed steps, and it turns analog conversion off. And I know that 99% of the time when I'm programming a new locomotive, I'm gonna key in a value of 34 into CV29. It's that simple and straightforward. If I then need to change something, uh, switch the reverse for my, uh, the, re the forward reverse direction for my alcos, I can simply change that to a value of 35. It's that straightforward and simple. And as I said, I will put a link in the description to a place where you can go to download this table. And hopefully that will answer any remaining questions that you might have. Okay, so hopefully I haven't confused the devil out of you. Please, if you have any questions about this, if I haven't made anything clear, please make that point in, your, in the comments, okay? I really appreciate having comments from you. The feedback helps me. Generally, I, 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 I try to make an effort not to dumb things down, but I also don't want to be talking over people's heads. So, have a good week, and I'll be back with you on Thursday with another video.
Bye now.